Today we're going to talk about punnels. Uh, a lot of people don't understand what a punnel is and why it was used. Um, during the mid 19th century, which would be about 1850, uh, they had a number of ways to hold the bottle so they could apply this top. And some of the early ways they did it were to take a pony rod, it was a metal tube uh, that they dipped in molten glass and they would apply to the base of the bottle. You can see the residue from that molten glass left on the bottom of this. Oftentimes uh, they will be a complete circle. You'll see that for instance in this bottle here and this is often referred to as a tubular panel. Um, regardless, anytime you see any type of uh, glass in a circular fashion on the base of a bottle, um, you know that it was made most likely before 1860 and possibly earlier. Um, later, they figured out a way to put the, to hold this bottle, this happens to be a soda bottle, and they would hold the bottle with the rod, but they would attach it without using uh, molten glass, but instead um, just a graphite uh, type material that would hold the bottle and allow them to apply the top. This particular pondle mark is called an iron or graphite, and you can see that it's oxidized. It has uh, kind of a red look to it. Um, they also come just, and this is what you see most of the time, is just basically uh, a graphite looking uh, bottom and that would certainly secure the base for holding and applying this, uh, in this case, a double roll collar. This is a uh, stout uh, or beer bottle. Um, as they went on, you can also see that often you can see just little bits of the uh, graphite panel here. Um, not much to see, but you know that it is of that time period. It definitely dates a bottle. Um, this jar is another good example. You can see uh, the marks from a graphite uh, device um, holding the jar to apply this uh, rather crudely applied top. Um, just because they used uh, a panel went and left gra uh, either graphite or glass at the base doesn't mean that you'll always find glass or uh, graphite. This, in this case, this is a very old bottle and it is uh, showing signs of the fact that it had uh, a panel used to apply this top, but uh, there's no graphite and there's, there's no glass. Um, another way to uh, put, um, to hold the bottle so that they could apply the top was to use a sand type panel and this left this type of impression. These are rarer than a lot you see. Um, you, we don't see as many sand type panels and they're generally associated with very early bottles. Although once again it was totally dependent on the glass factory that was producing them. Um, and also the glass uh, maker, the um, these guys, they came from different areas of the country and the world and um, they were adapted using one particular style. Maybe it was uh, a glass open panel or a graphite. In this case you can see another um, uh, sticky ball or sand type panel. You can also see the seam going through the middle of the base on this one. Um, which is a little unusual, but we do see them. As time went on, uh, they eventually figured out a way to hold the bottle using a snap case, and that prevented them having to use molten glass or a pony rod at all. 
so they would just hold the uh, bottle, this being a Pikes Peak flask, uh, still probably 1860s, but without any sort of ponnel. If you refer to the McCarran American Glass book, there's a, a table, a chart that shows the various uh, bases that were used um, after the ponnel era. Um, it is believed that the Doyleville Glass Works began using snap cases as early as 1840. Um, and we know that many glass uh, makers used uh, snap cases um, even from the 50s uh, up to th through the 90s. Um, and that would uh, be mostly on the Washington Taylor type uh, bottles. Um, you'll see some very early Washington Taylor flasks that don't have ponnels. This particular bottle is a Hostetter's Bitters, and as you can see, it has just a, a letter A and um, that was also used uh, using a snap case and then they applied the top. So there's many different styles of bases and I know a lot of people are wondering what in the heck uh, is this mark at the bottom and when you see one especially as bold as this uh, example um, you kind of wonder, I've had people say hey uh, it's got damage on the bottom and I just smile and point out that that is actually how they uh, made the, the bottle itself. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll be talking more about bases but um, uh, next we're going to move on to the different style of tops and um, it's very important in dating a bottle. Remember the ponnel marks whether they're graphite, whether they're uh, graphite or iron, sand, uh, open uh, tubular style, they pretty much tell you that a bottle was made uh, before 1860 and most likely earlier depending on the style of the panel.